Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today we're going to animate some banners in After Effects. Not like banners you see on websites, but like, you know, banners that flap around in the breeze. But these don't, because they're made out of vectors. But anyway, this has been a request from a couple of people, and uh, it's a lot simpler than you think it is. So let's just get into After Effects and get to it. Uh, first we're going to design them, and then we're going to animate them. That's it. I mean, that's, that's all there is. It's not even tricky. I'm not going to trick you. Unless I am, and that's the trick. Let's get into After Effects. So the first thing to do is make a new composition. Doesn't matter what size or how long. And then we're going to go New and make a shape layer so we can make this all out of vector objects. Then we'll just add a rectangle to that. And in the rectangle we want to change the height and width to be the size of whatever your main content banner is going to be. Shape that up however you'd like. And then we're going to add a fill to that give it some color and we're gonna go with a nice it's a subtle red and now we need to make other flat parts and the other angular parts but let's just rename things so we know what we're doing so duplicate that first layer and then rename it something more appropriate like the uh, left flat part and then drag it below the first layer. and then we're gonna make its size uh, substantially smaller, so basically just a square, and then shift it over using the arrow keys, and then up a little bit, and then set it to be darker, just so it stands out from what's in front of it. That looks good. And we're going to duplicate this all on the other side, so we're just going to do the first side uh, first. Should get it in the right spot where you specifically want it to be, then duplicate that, move it below again, and then we'll label this appropriately to be the furthest left thing and then we could make it darker or lighter back to the original color uh, we're gonna go back to the original color but you can make these whatever colors you want this is just specific to the intro now we're gonna add a poly star change it to be actually a polygon and uh, make sure it has four sides there and then we move it over so that it's on the end and this is gonna create that fishtail at the end of it that we want when we use the merge paths to instead of merging things we're going to subtract them and then you can just scale that up and do whatever to make it appropriate to whatever you're designing but that's how I make my fishtails hopefully you enjoy making them with beer batter and whatever so uh, now we're gonna add the connecting pieces the angle parts we're gonna use the pen tool make sure nothing's selected zoom in and just click and draw it. Now technically you could just click and draw this thing, all of it, if you wanted, but you know, we should use the rectangles because they kind of help speed things up. Pan down to the bottom and then stick it on the next point down there. And I'm just going to kind of guess that it, it ends somewhere around there. I don't really know, but we can always clean it up later. So finish off that shape and then poke the eyes out of what's in your way and then just move that corner down to be correct. Give it a new name, so left angle, make it uh, the darkest thing because it'll be the most in shadow, I guess, uh, and uh, move it appropriately in the layer stack. Now hopefully we've played our cards right and when we duplicate it and move it, it'll be easy to line up just using the nudge and for the arrow keys to nudge this thing correctly into place and there it is so congratulations you've designed one half of this thing you're you're pretty good at this like i said this isn't tricky and it's just a matter of manual labor to do all of this stuff now we're going to go and add masks to make the right on effect so up here you click mask instead of shape and then we're just going to draw a mask around all of these and I guess technically you could use the linear wipe to accomplish the same thing, but I find this gives me a bit more fine control when it comes to keyframing stuff. So we are going to be keyframing the mask path, so we're going to make a keyframe in there and then move ahead and just set it down. And then we're going to take that mask and we're going to copy and paste it to all of the layers, and it causes things to kind of look a little funny, but it is a quick way to put masks on things. Then you can just go in and resize them as you need. Do, do resizing make sure you get all of the stuff in there and don't worry too much that we haven't even touched the other side yet because we're going to animate this side then we're going to go back and 
basically duplicate it onto the other side so we don't have to do as much work because really what this channel is about is being really lazy and uh, making sure you have time to do more interesting things than drawing banners in After Effects. Not that that isn't really interesting, but anyway. So we're going to move these masks around just by clicking on their corners and resizing them so that they all fit over the desired end state that we want, which is everything on and everything looking good. Because then we just move the playhead to the beginning and we'll move all these masks to their desired open state, which is uh, ironically uh, closed with nothing on them. So we just click and drag and move it like that. Make sure you're selecting the path, all of the path, by selecting it in the timeline. And you double click on the point out there and then you drag it in. So just make sure it's going right to left, then left to right, then right to left, and so on. Just keep track of where that is and where it's going, and I think you'll get through this all right. Here on the last one, drag this out, and okay, so that's pretty good. When you play it back, that looks pretty interesting, but it's not really what I, I promised we'd do. So now you just have to do a little sequencing, a little timing, and then you're good to go. So first thing to do is to just play it through and then move the points and then move the layer above and then move the points of that one and just continue on in this fashion until everything has been moved to where you'd like it. Usually just try to time things out so it's kind of even that longer sections take longer to get on and shorter sections come on faster. So really you should be whipping through this pretty quickly. And we are using just linear keyframes, but feel free to easy ease them or do whatever at your own leisure. So that looks good. It looks like we've got the one side animating on correctly. Now we're just gonna duplicate that and put it onto the right side. So here's the ending, and this is where I guess we want things to start. So we're gonna select all those, duplicate them, which is Control D or Command D. And go Layer, Transform, Flip Horizontally. You can see it flips them all along their axis, and some of them have landed close to where we want them to be, most of them not, but uh, we just need to move them, you know, to where they ought to be. Right there looks good. So this all the way across. And that's all good. So at least everything is design-wise in the right spot. And if you want things to just come on from the outside, this is a perfectly acceptable solution. Um, however, if you want it to write across from left to right, like in the example, then we're going to have to go in and tweak the masks so that their open state or their start state is uh, aligned on the other side of the layers. So you're also going to want to go in here and probably rename all of these things appropriate to what side they're on, just in case you want to come back and edit it later or it confuses you or you're the kind of person who really likes to label things. I am that kind of person, so that's why I usually do this. I have a lot of sticky notes all over my desk. Anyway, so we're going to go in here. We're going to find the appropriate keyframes to start things on, and then we will just be moving the layers and then going into the mask and then editing the first keyframe of that mask to be on the other side. So instead of going left to right, they're going right to left or vice versa. And just make sure you're moving the correct keyframes and the correct layers. That's why we labeled them. So, you know, it would help if I actually could read my labels, but I have a rare form of dyslexia. I don't actually, that's, that's a bad joke. And I apologize to everyone who actually has dyslexia. So there we go. When you play it back, it animates on from right to left, and uh, I think we're good. Just a few little extras here at the end. Take all your layers and pre-compose them, and this will help you work with these things a bit better. So now you can duplicate this thing and move it down, maybe scale it or whatever, and uh, you'll be able to make a bunch of these. Uh, you'll be able to very quickly populate things with them, like countries or things, but uh, as you can see, they all animate on. You can sequence them out pretty easily by holding Shift, uh, Alt, and then hitting Page up and down. So there you go. you got a bunch of things coming on. You can trim off some of it or a lot of it and have fewer tiers or more tiers. It's pretty easy to expand these things. Um, if you want them to animate on and off, uh, just split the layer and then go Time, Time Remap, or uh, Reverse 
and then uh, you'll just go to the end so it'll leave the way it came in so you just have to go to the uh, the end once you've reversed it and uh, you can see reversed layers have that red line under them but uh, then it writes on and writes off so that's a pretty quick and easy way to make that happen for yourself um, what else can you do with these darn things um, you could uh, use an effect to have both ends come on the same way uh, pull up the mirror uh, effect throw that on there adjust where the center is and uh, then you get the other end and then the two ends will join up with each other uh, that's a pretty easy way to quickly grow and shrink these things uh, yeah I don't think there's anything else so uh, that's about it I'm Evan Abrams I want to thank you so much for watching this tutorial uh, this is a request from actually a lot of people wanted to know how to make these so hopefully this clears it up this is a simple and quick and very nice design element that I think is very popular right now so if you like it uh, comment rate subscribe to this thing uh, there's new tutorials every week if you get stuck ask me a question in the comments uh, I love to hear from people about what they think and what they're stuck on and what I can help them with so ask away uh, I want to thank everybody who subscribes to this channel uh, it's getting huge and uh, there are a lot of folks on here and it seems like it helps a lot of people so I am uh, I'm so pleased that people enjoy it so uh, I guess the only other thing is if you want that fancy font at the beginning uh, I sell that so it's in the links check that out and uh, thanks again for watching I'm Evan Abrams uh, follow me on Twitter all that crap and I'll see you around the internet thanks and have a nice day